In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an online registration form in WordPress. I'll specifically show you how to create a school registration form. And this is what we'll achieve by the end of this video. So, if you want to learn how to create an online registration form, keep watching. Hello guys, this is Swadik here at Digo Pages Web, where I do web tutorials just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. That said, let's jump into the video. So this is the website I want to create an online registration form for. To do that, I'm going to install a plugin that go to the back end of my website. Then I go over to plugins, click on add new. And the search plugins are search for Forminator. I have Forminator right here by WPMU Dev. I go ahead and click on install now. It is installed. I activate. The plugin is installed and activated successfully. And you see Forminator as part of the sidebar menu. I just hover on it, then I click confirms. From here, I click on create. From here, you can choose a template you want to use for your form. For this tutorial, I'm going to create everything from scratch. So I select blank, then I go ahead and click on continue. In here, I enter a name for my form. Then I click on create. Next is this interface where I'll insert all my form fields. So I go ahead and insert my first form field. So I click on insert fields. And from this pop-up, you can choose any of these fields for your form. The first field I'll choose is name. And I scroll down, click on insert fields. From here, you can choose to use a single field or multiple fields. With a single field, meaning users will have only one field where they can enter their full name. And with multiple fields, you give users the opportunity to select prefix enter their first name, middle name, and last name. With the prefix, if I drop down the arrow, these are the various values users can choose. That is if you choose to use multiple fields. I collapse it. With the first name, it's just a single field where they enter their first name. And the same goes for their middle name and last name. If you don't want to use all these fields, for instance, middle name, you can disable it and you can simply go ahead and use first and last names. You can also go ahead and perform some settings with regards to all the fields that is prefix, first name, middle name, and last name. For first name, you can decide to make it optional or required, and the same goes for middle name and last name. For this tutorial, I'm not going to use the multiple fields, so I go back to labels, then I choose single. The label, I make it full name. And the placeholder, instead of example John Doe, I'll just take off the example and I'll leave it as John Doe. I can add description if I want, but I'll leave it as it is. Next, I go over to settings and from here, I decide if I want to make it an optional field or a required field. I make it a required field. After selecting required fields, you see that we have error message. So if users do not enter anything in the field, this is the error message that will be displayed. You can go ahead and customize it to whatever text you want. So this is all the settings I want to do. Then I click on apply and my first field is inserted. Next, I add another field. So I can click here to add or right here. The next field I'm going to add is date of birth. So I'm going to go ahead and select the date picker. So I click on it, scroll down, insert fields. First is the type, you can choose to use calendar, drop downs, or text inputs. With the calendar, users will see a pop up of a calendar from which they select their dates. With drop down, they will need to choose from month, day, and year separately. And final is text inputs, where they need to enter in the month, day, and year manually. For this tutorial, I'm going to use drop downs. Next is the label, I make a date of birth. Next is date format. So for now, it is month, day, and year. I'm going to change it. So I drop down the arrow and I want day, month, and year. I can give it a description if I want. Next, I go over to settings and I'm going to go ahead and make it a required field. Then I scroll down and click on apply. 
The next field I'm going to add is gender. I click on insert fields. With this, you can use a drop down that is select or radio buttons. I'm going to use radio buttons. Then I insert fields. The label, I make it gender. Next is options. So the first option, I'll make it male. The second option will be female. If there are more options, I click on add option. Then I go ahead and enter in the next option. But I only want to limit it to male and female. So I take this off. Next, I go over to settings and it's going to be a required field. Going down, I click on apply. Take note with the radio button and the select. You give users the opportunity to select one option from the list of options. The next field I add is email field. So I insert a new field. Then I go ahead and select email. Insert fields. The label instead of email address, I just make it email. Then the placeholder, I remove example. I just leave it as John Doe. Next, I go to settings. Then I'm going to go ahead and make it a required field. Going down, I click on apply. Next, I add a residential address field, so I click on insert fields. With the residential address, you can choose to use input or text area. With text area, you can have multiple lines of text, but I just want to make my form simple, so I choose input. And I insert field. The label, I enter residential address. The placeholder, I make it enter address. This is an optional field, so I just go ahead and apply. The next field I'm going to add is last who attended. And to add this field, I'm going to use the text field. In order not to repeat the same process as I did for the residential address, I can simply go ahead and duplicate this particular field and customize it to the field I want. To do that, I click on the gear icon right here. Then I click on duplicate. And now I have a new text field which is also residential and you see that under the text field in the curly brackets we have text dash one and the second one is text dash two so as you keep on duplicating the field a new number will be added for you next i can go ahead and edit this field by clicking on the gear icon click on edit field so for the label instead of residential address i enter in last school attended and i enter in my placeholder it's going to be a required field, so I go to settings and I choose required and I apply. If you are finding value so far, please give this video a thumbs up. It does help me out so that the video will be suggested to more people on YouTube and also benefit more people. All right, let's continue. Next, I add a new field. This particular field is going to be a list from which I want users to select more than one. So to achieve this, I'm going to go ahead and use checkbox. Going down, I insert fields. In here, I enter in my label. Next is the options. I enter in my first option. I enter my second option. I want to have more than two options, so I add new option. And finally, I add my last option. Next, I go over to settings, then I will make it a required field. Going down, I apply. Next, I add another field which is going to be a radio button. Remember, I've already inserted a radio button field, so I can duplicate this. I have the duplicated field right here. I click on it, then I drag it to the end. Perfect. Then I edit it. The label, I change it to how did you hear about us. Then the options, the first one is newspaper. Next is website. I'll go ahead and add two more options. So from here, you can choose to make it a required or optional, whichever one you want. Then I click on apply. Next, I'll add another field, which is going to be a checkbox. And since we already know how to add a checkbox field, I'll make this pretty quick. So I click on insert fields, checkbox, insert fields. I give it a label and I enter my options. I make it a required field. Then I go ahead and apply. 
The next field I'm going to add is going to be a file upload field. I insert a field, then I choose file upload, insert fields. From here, you can choose to allow users to add single file or multiple files. With multiple files, meaning they can upload more than one file, I'm going to limit it to a single file. Then the label, I make it upload picture. Next, I go to settings and it's going to be an optional field. Next is allow file types. If you leave it as default, meaning users can upload any file type, I want to give them specific file types. I want users to upload only images, so I don't do anything here for now. I don't want them to upload documents, so I deselect this to uncheck all these. I do the same thing for the rest. Then I go back to images. I don't want users to upload all these extensions. So I go ahead and deselect all. Then I choose JPEG and PNG. Going down is file size limit. In here, you can go ahead and set the amount of file size you want users to upload. At the moment, it is set to 8 megabytes. You can drop down the arrow and choose kilobytes or bytes. I will leave it as megabytes and I will give it a maximum size of 5. Then I go ahead and apply. The final field I will insert is date field. So I pick date picker, insert field. The type I will leave it as calendar and the format I will change it to day, month, and year. And it's going to be a required field. And I click on apply. Perfect. We can go ahead and preview the whole form. This is how our form will look like. Awesome. Now in the submit button text, you see that it is send message. We don't want it as send message. So I go ahead and exit out of the preview. Scrolling down, this is where we can customize the button. I click on the gear icon. The button text, I change it to submit form. Then I go ahead and click on apply. Now that all my form fields are inserted, I go ahead and click on publish. And now my form is published and ready to go. And this is the short code I can embed on my page from which users can access the form. So I go ahead and copy it. Next, I'm going to create a page where I'll embed the code. So I go over to pages and I click on add new. I exit out of here and the title, I make it registration form. I can give us some instructions. Next, I hit enter and I'm going to go ahead and add a new block. From here, I search for short code. I have short code right here. I click on it then I go ahead and paste in the short code. I click on publish, publish. My page is published, I can view it. This is how the form will look like and it looks ugly. You see that it is glued to the left side of my page. I don't want it that way. So what I can do is I click on edit page. Then I go ahead and take off this block. So I just click in there. Then I click on this three dot right here. I click on remove short code. I hit enter. Then I go ahead and add a new block. So this time around I search for form. And I have this formulator widget right here. I click on it. And the form is inserted. I update the page. Let's take a look. And now this is looking better. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and test our form out. Date of birth. So I select the day, month, 11th month, and the year. Next is gender, going down, I enter in my email, residential address, last two attended, and the courses I want to register, I select all. How did you hear about us, website, and finally, I want to pay by cash. I can go ahead and upload my photo, which is optional. I have my picture right here, I select it. Then I go ahead and select the date on which I'm filling the form that is today and I click on submit form. Thank you for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. Next, let's check how our form submission will come up. So I go to the back end of my website. Then I go to Forminator. 
click on forms and right here is my online registration form i just click on it and you see i have one submissions so to retrieve the form i just go ahead and click on the number right here so in here you see some of the information the user has filled the form with and you can see that there are additional nine fields so i just click on the drop down arrow right here and i'll have the complete information the user has submitted i can export it then i go ahead and download csv file and i have my downloaded file here which i can view in excel so that's it on how to create an online registration form in wordpress using forminator all right guys i hope you found value in today's video if you did kindly hit the like button subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and also hit the notification bell so that each time i post a new video on this channel you will be the first to know keep watching and i will see you in the next one